Hey everyone, I'm Tatiana and today I'm going to be sharing with you five big mistakes that I made with my Amazon FBA business and I'm going to do it with a smile. <laughs> it was stressful at the time, now I can laugh about it. Okay, mistake number one, grow, grow, gone. That's something that happens to some businesses where you grow so fast that you outgrow your resources and the business fails to survive. Fortunately, my business survived, um, but indeed it was a challenge. And it's a good problem to have. Yes, you're growing, but it still can cripple businesses if you don't have the infrastructure. And that was exactly what my challenge was. Um, we were starting to gain momentum, gaining customers, clients, and you know, all of a sudden we went from X number of clients and we kind of skyrocketed and didn't have the customer support to support that growth. Meaning that I had hired a few freelancers. Um, they were operating out of Gmail. I didn't even have a customer support portal set up. And so a lot of the customer inquiries weren't getting responded to in a timely manner. Some of them were even going to the spam folder, getting missed. Some people weren't getting a response. So it's really not a great impression for your customers and it creates stress for them. And ultimately with a customer, with an online business, customer support is vital because already when people are ordering from your website or from Amazon, they're a bit hesitant. You know, on Amazon, less hesitant than if they were to order from your private website because they trust Amazon. That's a benefit of selling on Amazon. You, you kind of, Amazon passes that trust to you. Um, but nonetheless, they want to make sure that the product that they receive is exactly what was marketed to them. And they're kind of crossing their fingers, hoping that that's exactly what they're going to receive. If they reach out to you with an inquiry and you don't get back to them in a timely manner, that causes some stress and maybe they start thinking, oh, this was a scam, I want my money back, start applying for refunds, try, try and get a hold of you. So that was a challenge for me. Um, and the big mistake that I made with customer support is that with my business, I wanted to go above and beyond and so I, in my marketing, I told people, hey, before you ever place an order, make sure you email us. Email us and we'll have a real person personally size you and give you a sizing recommendation so that you can get a custom fit kind of pr product um, based on your body type. And when you're small, you can do that. It's sustainable. Um, because you can give that one-on-one -on -one attention. But when you grow, things like that, it's just you can't sustain that, that type of one-on-one -on -one attention, not unless you have built out a big customer support team who knows how to do that. So that was a big challenge because we had way more customer support tickets than the average e-commerce e business, like much more than the average e-commerce business, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of emails per day. So it was very challenging and I had a small customer support team. So that was the big number one challenge. Uh, didn't build up my team, my customer support team and infrastructure well enough. Uh, the second challenge with that was the inventory. I was not able to order enough inventory to sustain the growth. Uh, we had more customers than we had products. And the result of that was that the product was always out of stock on Amazon. I had different variants and oftentimes the best selling variants were sizes small and medium and those were often out of stock. And so that means, you know, for, for a business, it just means that you're losing out on potential sales. You're, you're, you're losing out by not having the inventory. And my challenge in the beginning was that I didn't have the money to buy the inventory. Uh, as many people who start an e-commerce business don't have the money. Uh, and I was a bit, uh, I didn't want to get a loan. I didn't want to take out a loan and uh, a bit stubborn with that. And in hindsight, I wish, I wish I wasn't so stubborn because I got in the way of the success of the business. I had momentum, I had proven my concept, the business was growing, it was safe enough for me to take out a loan to, to get more inventory at that point. But I was stubborn saying, no, I don't want to borrow money from anyone or any, any institution. And so um, what ended up happening was I had to wait until inventory was sold before I was able to place a new order. And it was just a, a cycle that continued until eventually I had enough funds in the bank account where I could place much larger orders uh, to sustain the growth. So that's gonna lead me to number two challenge. I had way too many SKUs. So a SKU is like one type of product, one individual product on Amazon. If you have variations, each one of those variations is a SKU. So if you have different colors, different patterns, different sizes, each one will be a different SKU. And at one point, 
on my website, I had over 500 SKUs. And initially, as a new business person, I thought the more the better. You know, provide these customers with options so that they can buy everything they need on my website. They don't have to go to someone else's website to place an order for something else that they need. That was kind of my, my thinking. Uh, but soon after, I realized uh, the 80-20 principle where, uh, you know, for example, when it comes to inventory, 80% of your results come from 20% of your inventory. Uh, and, and in my case, that was true. There was only certain SKUs, certain patterns, certain colors, certain sizes that were performing best. And uh, I didn't really realize that. And so I continue to grow. I continue to add more products, add more sizes, add different variations to the product line instead of just focusing on the ones that are doing well and just adding more inventory to those ones. So um, less is more sometimes. And I realized that now in hindsight. And if you're looking to expand your product line, that's great. But you don't need to have every single product available on the market because what also happens is that it can lead to analysis paralysis. If your customer has so many options, then they become indecisive. Too many options is not a good thing. If you go you know, to the grocery store and you see all of these different types of chocolate bars and then you end up standing there for five minutes trying to find out which chocolate bar you wanted to buy versus if there's only three options, it's easier to make your decision. And when it comes to your customer placing an order on your website or on Amazon, you want them to be able to make that decision quickly because the longer it takes them to place the order, the more likely it is that they're going to abandon cart. And so, that's why if you have too many products, that can actually hurt your sales rather than help them. And so if you are selling on your own website, it's highly recommended that you don't have too much going on. Like have a clear outcome of where you want people to look when they go to your website. What it is, what is the messaging? What do you want them to read? What do you want them to see? Have one objective. Don't have too many things flashing around and distracting them. You want them to know exactly what it is, um, that where exactly they need to go and help them to make their buying decision. If you have variations, if you have options, one way that you can help them make a buying decision is with quizzes. You can have a quiz, for example, which product to buy, which variation, which size, um, and it can help them give direction. And that way with a quiz, they may not have to reach out to you via customer support. So that's one less customer support ticket. Okay, number three was a lack of inventory management. Oh, this one always gets me. <laughs> this one I have to say with a smile on my face because this one was so painful. Um, I kept on ordering the same number of units. So because I had around 500 SKUs, um, each SKU was like a different size. And whenever I would go to place a new order with my supplier, I would order the same amount for each size. I know, it's crazy. I can't believe I did that. Why didn't I think of that? Uh, but I did it and, and you know, that's a mistake and I learned from it and th that's all, you know, failure as long as you learn from it It's not failure. It's learning from the experience So you don't make that mistake again and the more costly the mistake is the more painful It is the more likely that you're not going to make that mistake again So I had ordered the same number of units for each size um, failing to realize that there's only a few sizes that are really the best sellers and what ended up happening was, for example, the really large sizes and the really small sizes, the outliers, um, the inventory started piling up. And I wasn't reading my inventory reports. I was blindly ordering inventory from the manufacturer. This is a big no-no. If you don't know how to read your reports, if you're not a, a numbers person like me, hire someone to do this um, because this will cost you in your business as it had for me. Uh, I wasn't reading my reports. I failed to, to, to do that. And so what ended up happening, I also wasn't reading how much inventory we had at the warehouses, in the Amazon warehouses and the third party warehouses. And it ended up that I one day read the reports and realized that I had hundreds of thousands of dollars in dead stock. This is inventory that is likely not going to sell unless I do like a really good clearance on it. 
Um, and so uh, that was refreshing. <laughs> that was eye-opening. I realized the importance of reports, the importance of inventory management. And from there on after, I hired an inventory manager. I found someone on Upwork.com who who uh, did accounting and was able to bi-weekly send me reports, letting me know what the inventory levels are at and how much I should be ordering, giving me direction on how much to order with the supplier, rather than always ordering the same amount of units for each SKU, which is just crazy. So the money that I wasted in that inventory, you know, that hurt the business because that's money that I could have spent on other areas of the business, on the marketing, on uh, on on the the support, uh, expanding the support, on hiring management. There's so many ways that money could have been better spent. Uh, instead, it was sitting in a warehouse uh, and not moving, not doing anything for me. So lesson learned. Okay, number four. Now this one's also a painful one. Bookkeeping. Yes, make sure that you have clean books, good bookkeeping. In the beginning, you know, I have, I built my business, uh, just bootstrapped the business, really. Uh, it started with a few hundred dollars and just invested it, reinvested the profits, continued to reinvest the profits. And so I really tried to do everything in my business myself. I was the graphics designer, I was the marketer, I was the bookkeeper, I was I was the photographer, I was everything for my business until I decided that I could afford to hire people and kind of delegate certain tasks. And that's one thing I wish I did sooner, I should have hired sooner than I did. Uh, because you can afford it, you know, if your business is profiting, uh, you have to realize the value of your time. What's your time worth? And if you're doing a bad job at something, someone else can be doing a better job. And, and you have to understand uh, that it's not always like when you hire someone, it's costing your business. No, they're supposed to make a return for you. They're an asset for your business and understanding the value of that hire. Um, so I was doing the bookkeeping myself because I wanted to save money. And I figured that, you know, it's not that hard and I can just, I can manage it. I'm not doing the accounting, it's just bookkeeping. And what ended up happening was the year went by and then I guess another year went by and I, I guess I, for some reason, thought that I could just kind of do the books at the end of the year and just do it all myself. And it ended up being a total disaster. So I eventually had to hire a bookkeeper and uh, the bookkeeper I hired ended up not working out at all and spent tens of thousands of dollars on that bookkeeper and then eventually had to get everything that they did redone by another bookkeeper. So um, the bookkeeping, you know, my mistake was that I was trying to do it myself instead of hiring a professional. But then even when I hired a professional, I didn't do enough due diligence on that person, on that individual, and it ended up costing me way more money. So um, bookkeeping, make sure that you have clean books. Make sure that you are doing that from the beginning. Uh, it's very, very important, especially if one day you want to sell your business, it's going to be very important. Understand there's a difference between accrual bookkeeping and cash-based bookkeeping. Uh, if you want to plan to sell your business in the future, it's better to do your books on an accrual basis. It's going to help increase the valuation of your business. Uh, so it's might as well start from the beginning doing accrual bookkeeping. Cash-based bookkeeping can be kind of better for you to see what's going on in your accounts, but uh, I think it's just best to do accrual from the start. Now, that also leads me, that, that bad hire with the bookkeeper leads me to the last one, which is bad hires. Um, I've made some good hires, but uh, I, I've, I've realized that I, I don't have that skill. There's a skill that comes with hiring the right people, being able to identify if they're the right match. I think I lead a little bit too much with my heart instead of my brain. And uh, so I would hire people that I just liked, people that I vibed with, people that I felt like, yeah, like we're a good fit. Like we, I like you, let's be friends. <laughs> and when you're the boss, you have to figure out where do you draw the line between being the boss and being the friend? And for me, that was just always this like, this dance on this line that I couldn't really master. And, uh, and I, I, I'm, a, I'm a very easy boss. So, so for me, I ended up hiring some people that ended up costing the business. They were great people, nothing against these people, good people, good hearts, um, but they just weren't the right fit for the business. Their skills were not 
suitable for the job that I had for them, for the role that I had for them. And uh, you know, every wrong hire is going to cost not only your business, but your customers. And you have to realize the severity of that. So the rule is slow to hire, fast to fire. And for me, I was fast to hire, slow to fire. I even got to the point I had hired someone I won't name any names, but I had hired someone who I really liked, really cool person, love just the energy, like we're so similar. Um, but she did not necessarily have the skills that I needed for the job opening, for the position. I needed someone who could um, just help take a load off of my shoulders and be very organized, and that just wasn't the case. But I liked this person so much that I kept them on for a whole year extra knowing that like they're actually creating more work for me they're actually creating more stress for me and um and i even at one point had offered this person a new position in the company i made up a position just so that they could get out of that role so i could hire someone else to be in that position because i needed someone to be doing the job that they're doing they're not doing a good job of and just give them something else in the company so they could still remain in the company and still be my friend and um, and they didn't accept. And so I ended up keeping this person on way longer than I should have. It took a lot of time from me and it just, it wasn't a good match. And unfortunately it did not end in the best way. Um, and so understand like you have to be sure about the people that you hire and make sure that they're right, the right fit. Uh, not only do they have to be a culture fit, but they need to have the skills to meet the job. And so that's why it's good to have a 30-day probation period. You can try the person for 30 days, gives them, give them some work to do and see what do they come up with? What are they capable of? Uh, what, what do they bring back to you? Without giving them too much direction and instructions, see what they can come up with. Are they the type of people that like are outstanding? They just blow you away with the work? Or is it just kind of like, yeah, that's that's okay. Or like, or do you have to like really fix a lot of the errors that they made in their work? So identifying that early is very important. And um, yeah, and I mean, ultimately, I also could have made more hires in my business. I ended up doing a lot of things myself. It ended up, um, you know, I my business could have grown, could have gone to another level had I made more hires. But when I had made so many wrong hires, I started to become fearful of making new hires. And I started to avoid, you know, posting job openings and making new hires because I didn't want to go through that experience again of just like making the wrong hire and it costing me time and stress and just emotionally draining. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, the past does not equal the future, but understanding what your skills are in the business. And I now realize that my skill is not hiring. Next time I need to hire someone, I'm gonna go to an agency. I can hire an agency to find someone for me and make the right hire for me. Uh, and I think it's definitely worth it. All right, guys, so those are my five big Amazon FBA mistakes. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have made any similar mistakes as me, let me know in the comments section, or if you haven't yet started your business, let me know which of my five mistakes resonated with you most. Um, you know, I made these mistakes in the past, that's the past, I've learned from it, and now I know what to do moving forward. You know, I have more direction, I'm more clear, uh, and that's the beauty of, of it all. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.